Um, you're working on Borderlands 2. Could you please tell us, um, tell our viewers, what your role is and what you do? Yeah, I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Gearbox. I'm mm -hmm. uh, the chief creative officer for the company, and I'm an executive producer on Borderlands 2. Okay, cool. Uh, could you tell us more about uh, Borderlands 2's story and what we can expect of the new features? Sure. Uh, you know, this time uh, we are uh, we have a new uh, mm -hmm. new antagonist. Uh, we have Handsome Jack, uh, who is uh, the head of the Hyperion Corporation. Mm -hmm. And what he's done this time is he basically has sort of taken over all of Pandora and is trying to uh, yeah. get rid of the old Vault Hunters and, and destroy you know any of that kind of thing. Meanwhile, he's trying to find uh, another Vault, and mm -hmm. so you know you're trying to find a way to stop him from doing that. Um, and getting there first, so it's that's kind of the overarching sort of, you know, high level okay. plot. But yeah, it's a great romp all the way through it. Okay, cool. Um, in the original Borderlands, the story was surrounding about uh, the mysterious fall, mm -hmm. and some players find uh, find the ending a bit well, not, not really satisfying. Yeah. Yes. yes. How did you guys? Uh, know, uh, Go, uh, go with it? Yeah, we uh, actually have a line uh, in the very intro um, talking about when they, they, when they opened the vault, mm -hmm. the vault hunters found nothing but uh, tentacles and disappointment. Um, yeah. So we kind of made a joke about it. Um, we understand, uh, we know where we sort of uh, were not doing what we uh, you know, had really wanted yeah. to do as far as you know, uh, making sure that if you were really high level that it was a really um, strong fight for you or that the rewards were you know, enough reward for what the effort that yeah. you've made. This time we've definitely done things to you know, make sure that, that that's taken care yeah. of. So it should be a really exciting for uh, players who make it all the way through the game. Yeah, uh, the four players uh, from the first game mm -hmm. are like, well, gone, it's sort of. Mm -hmm. You got a totally new cast. Mm -hmm. uh, what, can you tell, tell uh, us about that? Sure. Yeah, so what we did was the, you know, the old Vault Hunters are still in the world. They play as NPCs and they're mm -hmm. integral into the story. They're really important. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, we needed to make uh, and improve um, on the, the classes that we had. And we wanted to make sure that this was a sort of Borderlands 2.0. You know? yeah. So we wanted to kind of upgrade not only everything in the world, enemies, mm -hmm. locations, but we wanted to make the characters uh, just more interesting as well. And so, you know, for example, uh, we have a siren, which is a part of the Borderlands fiction um, and is really important. So we wanted to bring back that class, um, you know, as yeah. it was. But now her action ability is different. Every, every siren has different capabilities and different abilities that they use. Um, we also have a new uh, sort of soldier class. Uh, we call it the Commando. It sort of makes you think of that's been improved and his turret is vastly improved. Um, and there's some really fun sort of paths that you can take if you really look at his skill tree. Okay. Um, the gun, you know, we had the Berserker before, right? And so we've, mm -hmm. we've added this time the, the sort of idea of the Gunzerker. So dual yeah. wielding, you kind of have to have that. And then in that sort of like idea of the, you know, sort of sniper class, we have the Assassin who kind of comes in, mm -hmm. he's able to make a, a character, um, you know, sort of a hologram of himself and then be able to get around and backstab or do whatever um, and, and shoot the enemies from, from the rear if you need to. Well, yeah. or are we going to see uh, the same characters from the first part? Are we going to see them? In the game? Oh yeah, yeah. You'll definitely see the. You know, not only do you see the four um, vault hunters from the first game. You don't play as them, mm -hmm. but you get to see them again. Yeah. You get to do things with them. Um, but you'll also see a lot of the characters that you got to know, whether it was in the first game or through the DLCs. Um, so you have, uh, you know, let's see, Scooter, who is the guy with the vehicles. He plays an important role. And you know, Marcus, who sells all the weapons. Uh, and then Moxie, who we saw in the second uh, DLC that uh, mm -hmm. Gearbox released. So she she makes an appearance as well. So. Um, some critics said that uh, the world of Borderlands 1 was pretty boring in some ways. Um, how do you guys cope with that uh, problem? Yeah, when you would play by yourself, especially, it was um, a little too dead. You know, that was just one of the, you know, we were focusing more on enemies and, um, mm -hmm. and worrying about that and just getting you from point A to point B. Um, in this game, when you go to Sanctuary, you'll find um, that there's a lot more uh, life in the different environments. Um, so we have NPCs that are walking around and they're talking to you and they're kind of clever and, and yeah. interesting. Uh, but also the way the NPCs move around. They're, they were kind of locked down in one place before, now they move around and do really interesting interactions. So Marcus will move out of his spot and he'll go do some other things with you. Um, and that's one of the ways that we've done that. And then also the way in which characters talk to you and interact with you in the story all along um, is, is, you know, is, is an improvement in that regard. But that was directly um, reacting to that that critique 
um, and saying, you know, you guys are right, we'll do more with that next time. Um, we couldn't necessarily do it the first time as well as we mm -hmm. wanted to. Um, we had the same kind of uh, desires and goals yeah. um, for, for Borderlands 1. Just sometimes, you know, it's your first game, you know, you can't do everything that you can think of. Um, mm -hmm. So this time we were able to achieve that. I think we've done a, a good job. I think you, you had a chance to play, so you get to see Tiny Tina is a great example of a really lively character who mm -hmm. can move around and do really interesting things in the environment. And I think that kind of brings it forward. But also co-op, you know, the game becomes more mm -hmm. alive when your friends are with you and, and that kind of thing. And it's, you know, Borderlands 2 is exceptional with co-op as well. Uh, in the first game, guns were a big feature. Mm. What are, what are we going to see uh, in the sequel? Yeah, so one of the things, I mean, this game is about guns. You know, all the advertising mm -hmm. we see, it's about a bazillion guns and all this kind of thing. So uh, one of the things that we wanted to do is make sure that the, um, the manufacturers had a very uh, uh, obvious sort of look to them. We did a pretty decent job with the first game, but this one we really were very, very um, focused on making sure that you could see them. Uh, from far, that they, the colors, you know, the rarity was applied mm -hmm. to the outside, uh, the scopes, we've done a lot of work on the scopes this time so that they're very different whether it's when you're looking through it or whether you're mm -hmm. looking at a sight post, there's a lot more of the technology that we have, um, the effects from uh, elemental effects and all that kind of stuff are all integrated in a way that is just really kind of improved on the first game, absolutely. And what are the biggest changes on that part? Well, I think it's mostly just the, the whole revamp of all the weapons are completely new and completely different. Mm -hmm. um, and, and But there's you know many of the same manufacturers make a comeback. Um, a great example is uh, TDR. TDR is a sort of disposable weapon. So it looks very plastic, it looks very angular, um, and it's not something you want to keep around. You, you don't even really reload it, right? Mm -hmm. What you do is, uh, instead of reloading it, you throw it out like a grenade. And so this is kind of a way that our system allows us to create these kind of things, but also makes for really fun gameplay. So if you only use one round, the rest of the rounds that were in the weapon add to the power of the explosion. So if you like shoot a couple times and then throw it and hit the enemy, boom, you know, there they go. So that's the kind of thing that, that you can kind of see as an improvement on the weapons that we've done before. Yeah. Um, the, well, cope is a big uh, thing. Are there going to be any changes on the part? Is it going to be, uh, well, uh, sometimes you play and then uh, play together, and some guy just steals your guns you want, you yep. want, and then... Well, um, one of the things that you can do is you have your own stash, and you're able to put things in the stash um, and keep them. So whether that's keeping it from your friends, you might <laughs> take them. Um, or what it can do is, uh, if you're playing as a, you know, say, you're a commander this time, but next mm -hmm. time you're going to play as the assassin. Um, and you happen to find some weapons that are for the assassin and you have them in your inventory, you can go and leave them there. And then as you decide to change uh, the game later and come back, then you can come back and your, your stuff will still be in the stash. Right. Uh, looting is very, uh, was, was very addictive in mm. Borderlands 2. We're going to see some different things about that. Or I, I think the, uh, you'll see some new items for sure, um, but you're going to see a lot more of the same kind of weapons and ammo and health and all that that you're used to seeing. Uh, but what we did do with diversity is um, really uh, change the things you find. There's a lot more objects in the world, uh, sort of like loot chests, if you will. I mean, there's mm -hmm. just so many in, in the game, and some are very clever and fun. We have a, an outhouse, uh, which is a, you know, like a toilet, and you go in there, and, and on the door are some weapons, and then there's you know, items inside. That's a pretty heavy one, and the, you know, the yeah. animations are funny, and there's just tons throughout the game, and they're all very, I mean, there's still some that uh, many of us haven't even seen before, and as we're playing through it, we're like, oh, that's great, they added this, you know, or whatever, so it's really fun. Um, well, we've heard that there are some reference in the game from movies and stuff. Can you tell us about that? Well, it's one of those things that we kind of do. I don't have any off the top of my head that I can just think of, um, yeah. but, but yeah, that, we did that a few times in the first game, you know, whether it's the name of, of some of the um, character skins, you know, because in the game this time, we did a lot more with um, how you can change out your heads and, and character, you know, uh, customization. Okay. So, uh, so one of the things that we did is we played around with the names of each one of the skins, and sometimes those are references to movies or whatever. Some, 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 some of the enemies are um, also named after, you know, something that may be a reference. Uh, for example, um, we have these things called bully monks, and they're really big. Well, there's one in, in the game that's called King Mong. So it's sort of you know, playing on King Kong type of thing. And he's huge, he's giant. So that's, that's one of the fun things. So if you find him, then you'll be like, oh, that's, that's a pretty cute reference, you know, that kind of thing. Cool. Well, thanks for the interview. Sure. Yeah, it's good meeting you. Yeah, cool. Cheers. Cool.